Hey and welcome. Good evening. This is Barb Pask from Ohio going to paint for you tonight. Painting on an 8x10 Centurion panel. My favorite size. <laughs> Toned with uh, bright acrylic paint. I'll turn you around show you what we're going to do tonight. I have a still life set up. There's some glare on the lemons. Sorry about that. Uh, teapot some berries and a couple lemons and I did put as you can see some striped fabric over my box it is on a box to get it up a little bit in height because I'm standing I have my screen around it and I have it lit with a light from the side so I'm thinking I like the looks of that let's angle you back up you're pretty much in front of it. This is, you know, you just, I mean, I got to see around you, so I got to keep you a little bit out of my way here. But we'll put you directly in front of it when we're finished. I'm using my view catcher to set up my composition. And I've set it for an 8x10. And we'll look through there to set up our composition. I got a lot of teapots. I, <laughs> I say I quit buying them, but I bought a couple last year, so I used to joke about being an addict. I do want to see, um, I have the striped fabric on here, and I do want to see some of it coming down over the edge, so I want to keep that in mind. I don't want to go, you know, too low. I do want to see that stripe as it shifts and changes directions, so. Right, the teapot's pretty high, and the bottom of the teapot. I'm looking through, and I'm trying to see where things are landing. That's what I'm doing. So it's a challenge painting from life because, again, as I move forward and backward the objects move so I'm keeping in mind I want to again see some of the front of that striped area my lemons looks like go over to about there both of them and we'll see how things work we may or may not run them off Just another sweet teapot that I own. This one's uh, brown, very glossy. So it's about like that. So again, we don't want to get up too high to where we'd uh, run into an issue when we frame it. Let's thin this down a little bit with a little bit of my solvent-free liquid. just take our time and enjoy this. I do like this part of it, the sketching, and this really for, is, oh, I must say, the most important part, but it is so important. It, you know, it's my composition, it's uh, getting the shape of the objects correct. This is such an important part of my process. Sticking my brush out there to see how high the little spout hits in relation to the pot. And it's pretty high on it. It's about there. All right, so let's look at the shape. You know, once we get this sketched on, I may not like it, and we may redo it. One of the lemons start here. Kind of 
using some straight lines so I Next Tuesday is my demo at the Middletown Arts Center. If you live anywhere near there, Middletown, Ohio, at 3.30, I'll be doing a demo. Um, they they picked that time because I think they have a, a oil painting class that gets out about that time of the day. So hopefully we'll have a nice crowd. And I sent it out to... I shared it on Facebook, so, you know, you may have some friends there, people that don't paint even, so a lot of times people don't get an opportunity to see people paint much, and uh, I think, I love it, you know, I just love watching demos, but it can be interesting, I think, to people that don't even paint, just to see the number of <sighs> steps that go into creating a painting. I see a um, reflection there that I'm putting in. And then, um, you see this comes across and then angles more down like that. You know, thought it might be interesting to show that. I don't know. Kind of trying to look over there and see what I, you know, get that angle correct. They're going to pretty much follow each other, though. See what this does as it goes over here. I haven't done any pattern cloths in a while. I do have, um, I have a bunch of old vintage tablecloths. This kind of is angling more that way now. Narrow, wide, it's kind of like narrow, wide, narrow, wide, it's kind of alternating. I think that's kind of where it ends and we can't see it really over there. do have these berries here. I put one of them up here on the teapot.
I'm getting some of these berries in. Now the teapot, uh, value-wise, is a bit darker. So I could, you know, um, I could put a value over the whole thing if I want it. Making sure I'm happy with this shape before I start. I'm feeling like that should come down a little bit. Let's get our little new toy, our little rubber scraper thing. Looks like a paintbrush. Removes paint. We could start wherever we wanted. We could start on lemons, which is going to be our cleanest color. Um, a lot of times that is where I start. But I think we'll start with the pot. Make sure this feels as correct, you know. So the pot is basically a um, kind of burnt sienna color. And I actually have some burnt sienna on here, which I normally don't have on here at all, but I had a big tube of it. So I you squirted some out the other day to tone a canvas with it. So some of it's on here, so we may mix some of that in actually. Normally, you know, I stick with a pretty limited palette. Okay, I'm going to try to make three values like we always do. So let's put some burnt sienna out. I'm going to put some, and I could use a transparent red oxide, which is a similar color, except it's transparent. And I'm going to make a darker value for the side over here that's away from the light and put some alterine. That would be for the darker places that we see on, on the container. Let's mix up some orange because that's always handy to have. We may end up mixing some of that into it. I did. I put a little orange in it which pulled it really nice. And again, I want some that's a bit lighter yet. So we're going to put some Cad Red Light in it. Maybe a little white, but I got to keep it uh, nice and warm. So maybe we'll put a little yellow in it. We got three values. Um, and that's what we'll start with. Let's 
get us a brush. Tonight I'm using a Dick Blick Master Stroke uh, Long Flat Bristle. Let's see what it says it is. Number six. So you can see compared to my thumb, it's a pretty good size. And we'll start with the darkest part. Get into our darkest mixture. Gonna put some of my solvent in it and uh, I try to overwork my brush strokes. And around our berry shapes. see down inside that spout a little bit. Like I said, in this pattern I have here, this is the lemons reflecting in, and this is the tablecloth. It just appears uh, kind of cooler and lighter, mostly. Depends on how picky you want to get. I mean, um, I want to be more impressionistic, but I mean, you could really go into the detail if you wanted. You know, I can see the berries in there. Just depends on what you want. It's your painting, what style you want to paint in. And moving more toward the middle, which is warmer and, and lighter. much white. We'll be let me get my little scraper and go ahead and get rid of some of that. Yeah, 
you know, and again, this is a big brush for, you know, trying to get little tiny detail. back into that a little bit. some crazy wind advisory tomorrow. I don't know what that's about. The electric company left a message here on the house phone, which they never do that. It's basically warning us that our electric might go out tomorrow because of the wind. So, okay. spout is uh, catching a reflection from the lemons too. And again, this is a big brush, so you know, might have to come back and uh, with a smaller brush and I'm trying just uh, some yellow right in there. I'll see what that ends up looking like. I think what we'll do is we'll we'll start with yellow, and we can always go over this and warm this up. This is our lemon reflection. I, you know, I don't think it's, we're going to want to leave it this yellow because I think, uh, I just don't think we will. I think we'll want to warm it up, but, and this area here is lighter because it's uh, reflecting the tablecloth. And like I said, I can see um, reflections of the the berries in there too. So we'll have to decide. Okay, now I'm gonna come back and warm this up a little bit, you know, so it feels like it is part of the pot. And I think we'll do the same over this the lemons. You know, the reflection of the lemons. Okay, right now I don't love the way that looks, but um, we'll see. Rather than assess it right now, I think we'll just move on and then we'll come back.
like I said, we'll move on and uh, think about that. There are a lot of uh, reflections in the pot. Matter of fact, I think I'll get my palette knife for that. All right, let's move on. And again, I, I'm not loving the way that feels, but um, we're gonna wait and assess it later. You know, we'll, we'll move on if I can quit picking with it, right? Well, I think the shape's pretty good. All right, let's clean our brush because we're gonna paint those lemons in. And I want a clean brush when I'm messing with yellow. Reasonably clean. over there took some cad yellow medium that's my warmest yellow we're starting with that and there's some areas that are just a little bit cooler which of course will pull it toward a green And I can warm those back up with a little red. So, this area down in here is cooler and darker. And back here. I didn't place solvent on there, so you can see I'm kind of trying to push it around. Let's clean that brush again. Probably should have started with the lightest, cleanest part of the lemon. That's what I would recommend. I'm gonna go shopping on Monday and buy the things for my still life, pick up some fresh fruits, I think. And I'm excited, hopefully it goes well, right? I always say painting's hard, you never know, do you, when it's gonna not work out. But if the people that are there are painters, they know that too, don't they? You know if you paint.
even though the front of this is a little green, I'm going, I'll start with yellow and then I can You know, putting on highlights, it's really a little premature this early, really. I mean, ideally, you block the whole painting in, you work from large to small. You know, I just wanted to stick them in there, so I do it. Do what I say, don't do it. What is it they say? <laughs> do as I say, not as I do, right? That's the saying, yeah. But ideally, yeah, you just, you know, block everything in, and then you work yourself into the small details. That's the correct way. All right, let's keep moving, because again, these colors affect the color in the lemons, too. Um, Poor, poor people in that <clears throat> an earthquake in Turkey. That's just oh my unbelievable. I keep seeing videos of it. I donated to one of our local ministries tonight that do wonderful things. Matthew twenty-five. You know, and it's cold on top of everything else, and you'd be terrified to be inside a building. I'm quite sure. You know, you'd want to be out in the middle of a field. I think we'll paint this in and then we'll put the berries in instead of doing them right now. I've got this back far enough that I can see um, somewhat of a shadow. to come back and brighten this handle so it stands out. I want it to stand out, so. Now it's pretty blue, which is probably fine with the warm color, but I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna warm it up. I think I prefer it to be a little more warm. Still feels pretty blue, doesn't it? It doesn't down here on my palette, but.
looking at the shape of this lid and I'm going to have to come back and work on it I mean a lot of these elements we're going to have to make sure you can understand them I know I mentioned to you back when I took that workshop with Sarah Sedwick several years ago, she uses uh, pieces of colored paper and puts those under her still life setup. She might sometime put, you know, three different pieces in a setup. And I bought a pack of that, though I haven't used it lately. It's a good idea though. Check out some of her work if you think of it and you'll see what I'm talking about, Sedwick. S-E-D-W-I-C-K. Um, she does beautiful still lifes. Yeah, we gotta define the shape of the lid better, and we will. And I'm gonna go over this. It'll still be darker. Um, created a lot more work for myself by putting the stripe pattern down, didn't I? You know, I don't usually have to think about that. I think what we'll do to pull this together is there's a lighter stripe in this. We'll, we'll use some of that color. You know, kind of pull the elements together, I think, that way. But I want it lighter on the top. This is a light stripe here. And where's another one? Way over here. And again, I gotta keep it just on the top. Where it goes down, we want to get darker. And uh, this one's kind of green. Yeah, we got to get the shadow of the lemons on there too. That one's gold. This one's kind of rusty. Back in here, I didn't even give that much thought. It's much darker back in there. kind of a let's see cream this is kind of a rustier color as is this one that's a gold one
just mixing something darker into that color it's on top to, because this part's more in shadow down here. And that center stripe is more of a gold color. And I don't know how we'll feel about this stripe thing later on. We'll see. Some people really like detail like this and they it's amazing what they do. And it's different doing it from life. I mean if you would photograph this and things wouldn't move around on you so. There's a local watercolor artist that uh, does a lot of still lifes with fruit and fabric and her, hers are, I would say, photorealism. They look like just like a photograph. Um, and she came and did a talk with my group one time and um, she, uh, I think, projects them, which, you know, you get everything exactly right when you do that. But I mean, they're beautiful. They're exactly like a photograph. I like paintings to look like paintings, you know. I'm more impressionistic. Let's get a brush that's a bit smaller and uh, look at some of this stuff, some of this detail.
We gotta get our berries in, of course. The berries are pretty dark, so I'm going to go with mostly alizarin. And as you can see, I got a pretty big brush because I don't want, you know, I don't care if they're perfect little balls. sure I'm gonna highlight every one of them I just don't know that I want to even though every one of them is highlighted I don't know that I want that
actually back in here is darker too because that's you know shadowed from the pot to lighten up some of these areas where you know we'd be catching more light I'm going to put on some rubber gloves and clean out my palette box really well so when I go do the demo I don't embarrass myself, right? Set it up with my paints ahead of time and uh, maybe you're a really neat painter, I'm not. You know, and I think when you're a plein air painter it's harder to be nice and neat. I mean, you know, I carry my bag out and I set it on the ground and bugs crawl in and out of it and uh, you know it's different. I see people that never paint and come in with their really nice bags and you know that's not me. My equipment goes through a lot you know. mixed up a little more dark. I'm looking for a few places where, you know, maybe we need a few more darks.
kind of a shadow behind there. This would be the time to come in if you felt like you covered up, you know, too much of your tone to come in with a little scraper and scrape some of it out. But I do see, you know, I do see quite a bit of the the pink poking through here, and I do like that. You know, we could pull a little more. That might be too much, too far. You know, maybe part of my stem be pink. Maybe a little bit of there. You know, we can always go back the other way if I don't like it. You know, I've got that orange under here, so... You know, actually, if we cut in, it actually probably... isn't bad, really. down there. I don't want to mirror the shape of that handle. And I don't want a real hard edge there. And a little more red here. I just all right. I think we're going to quit there and. Uh, Think about it. I'll back you away and we'll put the little mat on it. Put you more in front of it. Tip you in a little bit first. that. All right. Again, that's an 8 by 10 Centurion panel. Um, obviously haven't signed it. 
Let me go back in and I create a kind of a hard edge here that I'm not happy with. At the very end there, mindless painting I call it, right? I just, you saw me do that. I had it on my brush, I stuck it there. I mean, it's not bad, but I think it does. Uh, I've got a pretty warm, I just want to take care of that edge. So, all right, thanks for joining me. That was just about an hour. And uh, again, if you're near the Middletown Arts Center, Tuesday on Valentine's Day at 3.30, I'll be doing a demo. Love to have you join me if you're local. And uh, all right, watch for me next time. Please like and subscribe. All right, you have a wonderful evening. Good night.